My name is Astrid Schultz. I'm a vice president at EcoTrust. We're a Portland, Oregon-based uh, nonprofit holding company. I think this is how we've come to describe ourselves. We're actually a conglomerate, if you will, of 18 different nonprofit and for-profit entities, and that tells you something right off the bat about how we're approaching the natural resource economy. It can't be a niche nonprofit venture. It has to become mainstream. And that's how we've been working for the last 20 years, um, uh, turning something like $60 million worth of grants into $300 million worth of direct investments in coastal and rural communities. Can you say a word about how that came together? Because it sounds like there's a little magic at work in getting that kind of constituency, right? How a little magic? <laughs> well, the, the motivation, the insight was that, um, look, the founder of Ecotrust, Spencer Beebe, was a founder of Conservation International. And here we were going around the world telling other countries how to live more sustainably, how to embrace a more natural model of development. And the main insight was, well, how can we be preaching about that abroad when we don't uh, walk the talk at home? So Ecotrust is entirely premised on bringing about uh, reliable prosperity in the bioregion from California to Alaska. Could you expand on that a little bit? Because, right, you've got this uh, amazing mix of organizations together. You know, presumably you have a mission and a vision, and you, you mentioned the word bioregion. What exactly does that mean, and how much do people have to agree about what the bioregion is? Of? Well, um, it, it's, it's not... Um, the vision for bioregionalism is really a a rediscovery of natural boundaries. See, look, ecosystems aren't organized around political boundaries. They're organized along uh, watersheds and mountain ridges. Uh, and certainly where I come from in Europe, even some of the political boundaries uh, follow natural features. And we think that with the 21st century and uh, the environmental change uh, challenges that we're facing, uh, bioregions are the logical um, extent around which to organize our economies and our thinking. You don't have to agree. You live in the bioregion, whether you agree or not. Right. So how do you determine your priorities for actually acting on your principles? Well, the priorities, uh, that's a really good question. We're um, focused on a number of um, industries and uh, sort of key industries that sit of at, the at the intersection of uh, rural and urban, uh, of sort of the natural resource uh, base of the bioregion, and we're looking for strategic interventions where we can uh, generate what we call, or what many people uh, have come to refer to as triple bottom line outcomes. In other words, we're interested in transactions that benefit people and place. Uh, and we have uh, done a number of things, and everything from food and farms to forestry to fisheries. Food, farm, forestry, and fisheries, right. So the food and the build infrastructure. I mean, the build environment. Right. Uh, I was telling you about our headquarters building in the Pearl District. That sort of uh, epitomizes many of our principles, which is why I think you should go and visit yeah. it, okay. <laughs> of course. But that does sound good. And the food, it, you know, where our focus right now in this journey is on food and water. Uh -huh. So how does the concept of, do, does the concept of food shed or local food factor into the Principles oh, absolutely. And how, how, how so? Absolutely. I mean, we think about uh, reliable prosperity uh, as, among other things, the ability of the bioregion to generate the food and other ecosystem services that we depend on for our life within its boundaries. And right now, the way food is con produced and consumed uh, obviously is not uh, long-term uh, sustainable. There's a lot of redundant trade. Uh, uh, what have you, a lot of things that we couldn't grow here even if we tried, notably coffee, which we depend on uh, in Portland and other places. Um, but the notion of a food shed, uh, you know, sort of the having a defined um, geography from within which you can source the food that is consumed in the urban uh, areas is of great interest to us. And we are engaged in a number of activities, uh, mostly uh, looking at the, the sort of the, the distribution, uh, the middleware, you know, how do you get the food from producers to consumers, and there are lots of interesting bottlenecks. The current mainstream, uh, mainstream food system is heavily uh, biased towards commodity food production, and so the smaller scale, more local, more organic producers um, are disadvantaged, and so we're trying to level the playing field for them. Now, the strategic invention targeting food in this way, are you explicitly making um, or partnership building with folks and organizations in rural areas, and what does that look like, and how do you actually um, 
collaborate as partners? Is there a meeting of sure. round table? Or you, you know, we started about 10 years ago with, with uh, something called the Farmer Chef Connection. And it was literally speed dating for farmers and chefs. It was all about how do you get the farmers uh, to meet the chefs that are cooking with their food. And about 30% of all food is consumed in, in restaurants. So getting to the chefs is a, is a logical place to start, or was then. And uh, we discovered that there was a lot of sort of shared uh, uh, disbelief or myths about each other. Um, and so that we started out bringing them together. And it's very grassroots. I mean, you work with the... Uh, you know, sort of ag councils and you work with grow associations and sort of word of mouth. And that has now grown, uh, as I said, 10 years later into uh, an online uh, platform called Food Hub. And I encourage you to check that out, uh, which is basically, it's a bit like Match.com for producers and uh, mostly industrial, not industrial, uh, um, uh, what's the word, institutional food buyers. So Food Hub is an online a platform where, where food uh, buyers and producers find each other. Uh, the idea being that it helps uh, the farmer, you know, identify potential markets in schools, hospitals, what have you, uh, restaurants and so on, and sort of get out of the, the that incredible uh, rat race and uh, treadmill effect of having to, you know, uh, run around to farmers markets or do whatever other small scale distribution they would otherwise be doing. Okay, so if we could track this food example for a little mm -hmm. bit further. I notice you, the name of your organization is an Eco Trust, which is interesting how you're framing mm -hmm. that, and uh, maybe you can say a word about that, but <laughs> also how you frame the food challenge from a, an Eco Trust perspective. And we have maybe two minutes mm -hmm. left to deal with it. So is it, you're framing it in terms of health or uh, economy or ecology or how do you all of those. All of those. It's, it's really all of the above. Um, we, we've spent a lot of time working with the Portland Public Schools to get healthy food uh, grown locally into and fresh food into the school system. And again, you're fighting the mainstream uh, uh, f food system as it stands right now. You know, you're fighting USDA procurement policies that are heavily, uh, you know, tilted towards uh, chocolate milk and, uh, you know, potato chips and what have you. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous what counts as food in schools. Um, and so the idea is to uh, move around the 100, 200, 300 miles around Portland and bring it to, in this case, an urban center. So to us, it, 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 it completely embodies our triple bottom line mission. You know, you're generating better livelihoods for farmers. You're bringing healthy food to kids, the next generation that really uh, needs to literally ingest this <laughs> uh, philosophy of, of a more sustainable lifestyle right from the get-go. Uh, and coincidentally, it, uh, uh, you know, it has environmental benefits because you're moving food uh, across uh, shorter distances. It's grown in, in more uh, organic uh, uh, ways and what have you. Okay, the final question would be, since we are a global action research center, and mm -hmm. our agenda is one of promoting engaged scholarship and research that's connected to right. problem solving. What say you about the role that science and research can play in promoting your agenda? You know, well, my, uh, my, my formal title is Vice President of Knowledge Systems, so I actually head up our internal research department. And I think science is really only as useful as the application and the, and the outcomes it generates on the ground. So science in the ivory tower uh, is, I think, increasingly irrelevant in the 21st century. It's all about how you can take uh, useful insights from the academy, translate it into useful outcomes on the ground, uh, and then figure out a way to transfer that knowledge to other bioregions. And that's something we're very actively engaged in, that transfer. Any closing comments or well, any, a, a website you want uh, to Yeah, well, to clearly check us out at uh, www.ecotrust.org. Okay, thank you very much.